Our scriptures this week comes from the book of James, chapter 1, verses 17 to 24, 27, and from the gospel of Mark, chapter 7, verses 1 to 8, 14 to 15, and 21 to 23. James chapter 1, verses 17 to 27, and Mark chapter 7, verses 1 to 8, 14 to 15, and 21 to 23. Here now the reading of God's words. James chapter 1. Every generous act of giving, with every perfect gift, is from above, coming down from the Father of light with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. In fulfillment of his own purpose, he gave us birth by the, by the word of truth, so that we may become a kind of first fruits of his creation. You must understand this, my beloved, let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger. For your anger does not produce God's righteousness. Therefore, rid yourselves of all sordidness and rank growth of wickedness, and welcome with meekness the implanted word that has the power to save your souls. But be doers of the word, and not merely hearers who deceive themselves. For if any are hearers of the word and are not doers, they are like those who looked at themselves in the mirror. But they look at themselves and on going away immediately forget what they were like. But those who look into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and persevere, and be not hearers who forget, but doers who act, they will be blessed in their doing. If anything, they are religious and do not bridle their tongues, but receive their, but deceive their hearts. Their religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God. Before God the Father is this, to care for orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself unstained by the power, by the world. From the Gospel of Mark, chapter 7, verses 1 to 7, and 14 to 15, and 21 to 22, 23, 21 to 23. Now when the Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gather around Jesus, they noticed that some of Jesus' disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and the, all the Jews do not eat unless they thoroughly wash their hands, and thus observing the traditions of the elders. And they do not eat anything from the market unless they wash it. And they are also many other traditions that they observe. The washing of cups, pots, and bronze kettles. So the Pharisees and the scribes asked Jesus, why do your disciples not live according to the traditions of the elders, but eat with, un but eat with defiled hands? Jesus said to them, Isaiah prophesied rightly about you hypocrites. As it is written, this people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts, as doctrines, you abandon the commandment of God and hold to human tradition. Verse 14. Then he called the crowd again and said to them, Listen to me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside a person that by going in can defile, but the things that come out are what defile. For it is from within, from the human heart, that evil intention comes. Fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, folly. 
All these evil things come from within and they defile a person. Friends, this is the word of the Lord for us this morning. Thanks be to God. How many of you remember there used to be a commercial on TV about the Huntington Learning Center? When a mother was scolding at her son for receiving another bad report card, and the child would respond by saying, I hate school. Do you think I want to fail? Mom, I, was, I said I would do better. Then the mother would reply, saying, saying it and doing it are two different things. How many of you remember that commercial? Saying it and doing it are two different things. I think this cliche resonates our message this morning as presented by the writer of James, who reminded us how we ought to live out our everyday lives, both ethically, morally, and spiritually. We need to be accountable with what we say through our actions, as our actions reflect upon our commitment to the obedience of the spiritual law. For those of us who participated in the midweek Bible studies, we went through the book of James last year and we came to realize that James was a very practical and instructional letter to the believers of the early church. As Christians, we must not only talk the talk, but we must also walk the talk. We must say what we mean and mean what we say. Unfortunately, sometimes the church community, whether it's the leaders or the parishioners, receive a bad reputation that it is full of hypocrites and that the people don't practice what they preach. I think this is a wake-up call for all of us to examine our own conducts and behaviors, how we live our everyday lives through our actions, matters, as they reflect upon our faith and the values that we uphold. The writer of James, who was believed to be one of Jesus' biological brothers, expressed his deep concerns over the people's conduct and behaviors. James was not afraid to speak his mind against his own brothers, while spiritually, spiritual brothers, that is, while exposing the hypocrisies of those who failed to lift up to the teachings and command mandates of Christ. Even though James came short of calling them out by names, but he challenged them to examine their own conducts and be accountable to their own actions. As in his later on in this letter in verse, verses 19 and 20, James offered a series of practical advices. As he called out his as he called out to the attentions of his fellow believers that they need to be quick to listen, slow to speak and slow to anger, for our anger does not produce God's righteousness. This was certainly not an easy task to carry out. Quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger. Our natural human instinct is to react and respond when someone says something that, that is not nice to us or that hurts us. We tend to respond uh, based on our own actions. But James was saying that, saying that cooler heads shall prevail. Be quick to listen, but slow to speak and slow to anger. Be angry, but do not sin. I'm sure all of us have found ourselves in situations when we become so aggravated by someone 
or being accused of doing of things that we did not do. We become easily angry or upset and find ourselves difficult to restrain our emotion. We need to take control of our over our behaviors. Even though with the word choice of word that we say. Some of us may have an issues with quickly pointing out with the petty wrongs of others while we fail to acknowledge our own and proclaim our own self-righteousness. But as Jesus taught in one of his parables, as part of his Sermon on the Mount, that we do not judge so that we may not be judged. For with the judgment we make, we will be judged, and the measure we give will be the measure we get. Why do you see the speck in your brother's eyes, but do not notice the log in your own eye? Keep in mind that every time we point our fingers at someone else, or two fingers are pointing in the other person's direction, the, re the remaining three are pointing back to our own. When was the last time we were engaged in a disagreement or a conflict with someone? What were the circumstances? Who started it? And whose fault was it? But how did it get resolved, or maybe not. Perhaps some of us are still holding on to that grudge against others. But doesn't that make us hypocrites? Whenever we confess and pray as the Lord taught us, forgive our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Our genuine faith in Christ transforms our lives and shapes us into who God created us to be. We acknowledge that even though we may not live our lives so perfectly, reflective of our faith, nevertheless, as James puts it, it is our faith. It is our faith that would ultimately save us and bear us much fruits at the end. Our actions as seen by others in this world demonstrate our faith that we uphold. Faith without work or faith without action is nothing but empty words and promises. From the gospel lessons that we read earlier from Mark, we also came across a group of Pharisees who were quick in pointing out the petty wrongs of others. In this case, the, dis the disciples of Jesus were being accused of eating without properly washing their hands. Now you may say, what's the big deal, right? We all have done that, I'm sure, eating without washing our hands. However, that was not the main point of the argument. The argument was that the Pharisees was arguing that it was not about the petty act of washing hands itself, but it was more about one's obedience to the law and ob obedience to the, custom, the, the customs and the traditions. It's the matter of the principle. These Pharisees were legalists who were so caught up with the obeying and obliging to the laws and traditions while neglecting their own wrongdoings. They were quick in putting the other person's conduct and characters under the microscope while accusing others of their wrongdoing and neglecting to look at their own. When Jesus saw what was happening, he quickly turned this into a teaching moment to his disciples and those around. You remember what he said to him? He said, it's not what goes into one's body that defiled you, but what comes out of one's body. Through our words, our actions, and our thoughts. In other words, 
Don't be so quick in placing judgments upon others. But we need to examine our own conducts ourselves. Judge not, or you will be judged. Also, as Jesus said, for it is from within and from our human hearts that evil intentions come. Fornications, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, and folly. All these evil things come from within and they defile a person. Friends, as God's chosen and set apart people in this world, we are being held to a much higher moral and ethical standard. A standard that Christ has set before us for us to achieve and not too high for us to strive for. Through Christ, God has met us halfway through his work of reconciliations for all humankind. Christ has already done this work upon the cross, but now we must also do our parts. As we exemplify our roles and obligations by displaying to those around us, as we reflect our, upon our faith and mirror God's love towards others. As the Apostle Peter encouraged us that, quote, we are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a royal, a holy nation, God's holy people, in order that we may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called us out of the darkness into his marvelous light. For once we were not a people, but now we are God's people. Once we have, we have not received mercy, but now we have received mercy. In a moment, we will once again come before the table of grace. As we participate in this feast of thanksgiving, this table serve as, serves as a constant reminder that we are not perfect people and we are in need of God's grace through the reconciling work of Christ. It is a table of welcome, not for those who are righteous, but for those who are in need of God's redemptive grace. It is a table set for those who have been lost and fallen astray and are seeking to return back to God through the confessions of our sins. Friends, God has challenged us today to live and examine our own spiritual and practical lives. As the Greek philosopher Socrates once said, the unexamined life is not worth living. May this be our motto and standard of living going forward as we honor to lift out our life while exemplifying and while exemplifying Christ's characters of humility, grace, compassion, and justice towards all of God's people. Let us exhibit Christ's teaching through our thoughts, deeds, words, and prayers. Don't just talk the talk, but we must also walk the talk as well. Thanks be to God. In the name of God the Father, and God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen.